Um, we're going to move into presentations now. And um, Dr. Williams, you have we have four things listed. The IB Middle Years program is first. So yes, and this is really a follow-up to a previous strategic plan update, as well as some other conversations we've had at, at board work sessions, um, including la last year at, at work sessions in the spring. And specifically, this update is on the uh, IB Middle Years program at Yorktown Middle School. We're not asking for any action on this this evening, but we would like to provide some background information this evening for possible action later this month. Dr. Guy? Thank you, Dr. Williams. Good evening, uh, Chairman Medford, <laughs> members of the board. So used to saying Madam Chair, that I had to think about that. Um, as Dr. Williams shared, this is a follow-up to information that we've shared previously. When we did the strategic plan status update, we shared with you um, that a survey had been conducted, and so, <clears throat> excuse me, we'd like to share that information with you this evening. I'd like to start by going back a few years, because as you'll remember, we started out as a cohort model, and um, the IB uh, group came and visited the school in 2010 and on August 24, 2010, Yorktown Middle School received authorization to offer the IB Middle Years program and they could call themselves a world school at that, an IB world school at that point in time. As part of the authorization, there were several matters to be addressed, which is normal in a visit. The, these are things that they say you have to take care of. One of those matters to be addressed stated specifically that the school must devise a plan for allowing access to the MYP for all students of the school. <clears throat> Additionally, they share that after they list the matters to be addressed, they say that addressing these matters are essential for the delivery of the program. Where matters are not satisfactorily addressed, the IB reserves the right to withdraw the school's authorization to teach the middle years program. And so immediately following that visit, the school division started working and the school started working on moving toward a whole school model. Um, this year, uh, we've implemented in the seventh grade. Last year, we had implemented in the sixth grade with a whole school model. Now, fast forward to where we are right now. Um, actually, let's actually look forward to next year. In the fall of 2014, the Yorktown Middle School will receive an IB site visit. The team will observe the school in action and make observations regarding the implementation of their MYP program. But prior to that happening, the Yorktown Middle School faculty is responsible for completing a self-evaluation regarding the MYP implementation. In fact, their self-study has to be completed and submitted to IB by June of 2014. And so as part of that self-study, they have already conducted some surveys. And one of the surveys was a survey of faculty, and they've also surveyed parents and students as well. Um, and so that, that gives you the information as to where a lot of this information is coming. So it's part of the self-study process that was initiated. I'd like to share with you some of the information or some of the key findings from the teacher survey. The majority of teachers surveyed see a strong relationship between the middle years program and transformative learning. In fact, only 14% of the staff said that they did not see a connection between the two. And when I spoke with um, the principal, she shared that some of that may have been teachers very new to the school division because um, the survey was conducted the end of September. One of the other findings of the survey is that the teachers, many of the teachers, rarely utilize the IB MYP resources other than those that they're required to use, such as the unit planner. Um, other findings were that the Yorktown Middle School teachers perceived barriers, um, such as time for planning and resources, as roadblocks for effectively implementing the MYP. And I'll speak to that a little bit more in the next slide. <coughs> And then specifically when asked, less than 6% of teachers felt that the value of the MYP program outweighed the potential costs. Now because the survey was done so early in the year, uh, Ms. Hutton followed up with her staff in December at a faculty meeting. They did a da uh, data analysis protocol where they really looked at the survey results and she asked questions to say, does this accurately reflect our perception of the MYP program? Can and I ask a quick question? You sure can. What was, was this all teachers? 
Yes. Survey, so this was 100%. Um, let me look at the, I think that they had a very high participation rate. Um, 52. 52%? No, no, 52 staff members responded to the What's survey. The total number? I would have to follow up with Ms. Hutton to find out specifically what that is, but that's, I, I, my understanding is that it was very high participation rate. I don't want to say 100% without following up with as her. You, as you bring back that, e whether it be email or whatever, mm -hmm. um, of that, of her total number of faculty, and if, well, the total number of faculty, we know 52 of that total number complete the survey. Mm -hmm. Of that 52, well, of her total faculty, how many were new three years or less or even one year? And of the 52, how many were new? I kind of want to get a little it bit more It may be specifics. difficult in terms of saying how many, like for example, let's say it's not 100%, let's say it's 95%. I'm not going to be able to tell you whether out of that 95%, um, if somebody didn't participate, whether it was a new, but I can tell you the number of new teachers that she has. Was it anonymous? Yes. Okay. Yes. And, it's and certainly it's fair to say that two thirds or more. Oh, yes. Yes. Responded. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I would say that it's higher than that, yes. but I'll, I'll actually find out for you. But what I was about to share is at the December faculty meeting, they reviewed the survey results and in their dialogue in the December faculty meeting, the um, opinion was that it accurately reflected the sentiments of the faculty. Um, the, the pieces that they discussed was that the time to plan for MYP was a barrier. The IB MYP resources are overwhelming and confusing. And that good teachers use interdisciplinary teaching and teaching for international minded, mindedness regardless of MYP. And again, I want to point to the fact that they talked about the fact that they saw a strong relationship between transformative learning and the MYP program. So given this information, we do feel like we're at a decision point as to whether or not we continue the IB MYP program at the Yorktown Middle School. Um, and there are a number of reasons why we want to have this conversation now. One is because w students are beginning to register for the courses for next year. The magnet programs that we host for students to learn more about the program are typically held in early February, and so that information will go out soon. Additionally, because of where we are in the self-study process, if, um, if we are going to make the decision not to continue with the MYP program, we need to make that decision before we're required to pay the IB program a significant um, sum of money, and that occurs in early March where that, has to, that payment has to occur. And so that's why the decision needs to occur at this point in time. So what I, Not literally this evening. No, just not this repeat, evening, but, but soon. Yes. Yes, why we're having this conversation right. at this point in time. Yeah, I, I just did, uh, probably better a little bit after, after you finish. I just want to find out what we have an update on what the cost actually is per year on that. I know we, we look at that every year. We budget $15,000 for the IBMYP program, but we also supplement that from other budgets at the school board office because it doesn't typically cover the cost. Somehow I remember $40,000. You're probably remembering the cost of the, um, the IB coordinator as part of that. Of those two together was about forty thousand. Well, because the IB coordinator is part time at the middle school and part time at the high school. Okay. All right. So as we as we answer this question, or as as we discuss this question of whether or not we continue the IB middle years program, I want to emphasize some of the points that the faculty saw as. Um, as important discussion points. The first was that the goals of the MYP program, and I know I'm being, uh, the goals of the middle years program parallel those of transformative learning, specifically with the global context, the cycle of inquiry, and the rubrics and checklists. 
However, and this is a big however, the MYP structure is not flexible. You have to use the MYP unit planner. You have to use the MYP language. So as we're working with our st staff on transformative project-based learning, and we get rubrics that go along with that, they still have to use the IB MYP language. They can't, um, so they essentially have to learn two languages with regard to using their IB language, even though they can mean the exact same thing. The second piece is the cost of the program, and specifically, this just shares with you the fee structure for the IB. Just to be an IB MYP school, this is the cost structure. In FY09, it was 4,300. In FY10, 3,500. And then you can see where that cost um, jumped significantly. Um, we paid a prorated fee in the first year, and so that's why you see a big jump in the cost in FY11 when we became a world school. Um, additionally, I will share with you that the MYP is undergoing significant um, curriculum changes, and they are anticipating that the pricing framework, um, the fee will increase um, more than what you're seeing right here. We'll see a, a bigger increase for 2015. The survey results that I shared with you also talked a little bit about the lack of staff support. And I think that that is related to a number of issues. You'll see resources, professional development, and time. One of the pieces is with regard to time and resources is that the MYP, um, the middle years program, in addition to the individual planning time, teachers need to have common planning time. And so the way that our schedule is currently scheduled, most teachers have a duty period and they have an individual planning time. And so a lot of the common planning time that Yorktown Middle School is doing now is either before school or after school. Um, they're also using substitutes to free teachers up to give them some common planning time, but they don't have common planning time necessarily on a weekly basis during the school day. And to make that happen would, would be a significant cost to the division. I also want to share that the professional development that Yorktown Middle School has provided with regards to the MYP program, they have provided significant professional development within the division with respect to the MYP program. Where the funding has limited them is the ability to go out to IB conferences where you can where you can meet with other people that are part of MYP schools and um, share ideas. We have sh sent people as required, but we've met the minimum requirements for sending staff out. So I want to be really clear. Yorktown Middle School staff has done a great job in terms of the professional development within the division and have met the requirements. Where they've been limited is in the ability to send people out to conferences. Lastly, I want to share with you with regard to the professional development in this item is that in addition to all the MYP staff development requirements, the staff also participates in all the York County School Division professional development that is focused on division initiatives. So in essence, they're doing um, the same professional development that all the other schools are plus the professional development that's required as part of being an MYP school. The next item that I have listed here is, are the scheduling issues for sixth graders. In the IB program, all students are required to take fine arts, foreign language. Excuse me. This oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh. I was looking at the, the other schedule. I'm sorry. Yes, I'll go to it in just yeah. a second. All students are required to take fine arts, foreign language, and a design course. And as a result, their PE and encore classes have been reduced to 45 minutes. So. Some of you have already looked ahead at the schedules. Yeah. So if you take a look at this, you're going to see a sixth grade, um, a typical sixth grade schedule at Grafton Middle, Queens Lake, and Tab Middle. And then you'll see the sixth grade schedule at Yorktown Middle School. And so at all the rest of the middle schools, students have PE for 90 minutes every other day. At Yorktown Middle School, our sixth graders have PE for 45 minutes every other day. And so they have half the PE time. Additionally, all the other students either typically take band 
or they're on the wheel, which means they get different elective choices, but they have a different one each nine weeks. At Yorktown Middle School, they're taking a foreign language, they're taking the MYP design, and they're taking a fine arts, which could be their band, but it would be 45 minutes every other day. Now, one of the pieces I'll share with you from the um, parent survey that the parents very much liked in terms of the benefits 51, a little bit more than 51% of the parents that responded to the survey liked the increased exposure to foreign language. That was one of the things that they saw as a benefit. But one of the things that they saw as a limitation, 42% of the parents responding to the survey found that they did not like the limited choice for electives for their children because of the, the um, requirements of the MYP program. Uh, you, many, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. You may have just mentioned this. I, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to get this straight in my mind. The, the foreign language that the sixth graders would take mm -hmm. at York Middle, is that, does that equate to the wheel at the other? No, it, it's, a, it's actually more than the wheel because it's 45 minutes a day and it's all year long. Every other day, all year long. But it wouldn't be a full Spanish class or whatever. So no, something it, in between the wheel and a yes. year long Spanish yeah. class. Yes. So it's designed specifically for, for York Middle then? Yes. Okay, all right. How many parents um, participated in the uh -huh. survey? Only 100 parents responded to the survey. But I will remind you that the eighth graders are still in a cohort model, so you likely would not have a lot of eighth grade parents. Um, actually, it was fairly even. Um, 39 parents of sixth graders, 38 parents of seventh graders and 31 parents of eighth grade students so it was actually 97. The MYP design, um, is this the same class that every every sixth grader is taking or is there a difference in the MYP no, design classes? Yes, the MYP design is either a technology um, design course, it can also be in family consumer science, um, it could be very similar to what students are taking. However, on, in the other schools, the students would be taking a course in the wheel, which means it would only be one nine weeks. It would be every other day for 90 minutes, one nine weeks. This course, on the other hand, is 45 minutes every other day, but it's all year long. So it's, it is additional time in that course, and it has to include the design elements of, um, of the middle years program. I know I've heard from parents with sixth graders at YMS who have been concerned over the 45 minutes of PE time because mm -hmm. these are sixth graders just coming from elementary school and um, they're and that's the a desire lot of, to have more time. Right. That's that's a and it's a heavy schedule. That's a heavy load for mm -hmm. a sixth grader. Mm -hmm. And the last item that I want to mention here is the middle years program curriculum revision that I just mentioned. It's called the next chapter. That um, curriculum uh, actually comes out this month and it has to be implemented next year. So as you can imagine, any time a new curriculum goes out, there's significant professional development that goes along with that. So given all this information, given the feedback that we've received from staff, um, it is our recommendation at this time that we make the decision not to continue the middle years program. Not because it's not a wonderful program, but because we truly do believe that transformative learning offers um, the same opportunities that the middle years program um, has provided our students with. Have we looked at the real successes of these? I mean, do, do we have data that shows <clears throat> that this is truly been successful and has been um, worth the investment that we've, we've put in this? I mean, I'm assuming all that's been taken into account. I mean, you, 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 I guess my thought is, you know, I've, al I've always questioned the program, you know, with the cost and all, but just because I felt like perhaps this could be basically what you're saying now, this could be done throughout the division. You know, but having said that, you know, if, if it helps kids, I mean, we're here to, we're here to Help these kids excel. So I guess I would be interested in knowing what does some of the data say. I mean, so have some of the have the best 
scores increased? In, I mean, what's what's happened? But what you've got to realize is you've only got had a whole school a whole school model. Yeah. This is we are only in the second year, so you've second really year. only got one year of data with regard to the whole school model. And, and, and it's hard to attribute it. And you can't necessarily. To, yes. You have to go back to prior to, to any of that, maybe. Mm -hmm. But know? even then, it's very hard to isolate the effect of the pro overall program itself on uh, SOL scores because the purpose of the program is not. That's prepare students for the standard of learning exams, and so it, it, we, we, there's certainly qualitative, more informal feedback and generalizations that can be made. But in terms of a quantitative, uh, being able to quanti assert, assert quantitatively that he, these are the results, we're not in a, in a position to do that. Um, I will say I spoke to a teacher the other day. Uh, the, the teacher's there, mm -hmm. and. I just, just point blank, it came up somehow, and I just asked, I said, what do you think? I mean, do, do you feel like this would be a huge loss for the school? I mean, what have your experiences been? He's said, he said, to be honest with you, he says, I feel like we're basically teaching that way with or without the NYP program. He says, and that's what we'll continue to do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's basically what you're saying, but it kind of reaffirmed that for me, that at least from one. I, I think the individual, I think the teachers that are more vested in the program are probably the ones that have been in the cohort that started out in the cohort model. Um, so that's not to say that there aren't teachers that um, really value this program, but as a group, I think the, the perspective or the feeling is that um, good teaching is good teaching, that transformative learning really parallels what, were the, what are the best aspects of the MYP program and so that they can continue doing the things that um, will benefit children through transformative learning. And then that way we don't have students on a different schedule than they are in all the other middle schools. Um, and really until you, put the, until you put it in place, until you move from the cohort model to a whole school model, even the scheduling issue for sixth graders was not realized until they were developing how do we meet the requirements of the middle years program. They've got the they've got the professional development that was offered they've got the year mm -hmm. the experience that mm -hmm. they are teaching for, mm -hmm. the, for that that year so I mean it's it's you know it's it's a win-win situation mm -hmm. really I mean they're not gonna it's experience it's incredibly absolutely. valuable so they continue that wherever they are absolutely yeah, and I think that um, you look at the cost and you go you know it's minimal <laughs> I mean the cost for the program is minimal it's, it's based on our budgets it's it's pennies in the grand scheme of things but one thing that's always worried me and, and what I've heard from people is the professional development mm -hmm. and the amount of more time that they're putting in to a model that everybody's wanted to see successful. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is it maybe because we're just not the size of a school division that would be ideal for something like this because we only have four middle schools and we don't have 10 or 12 or 20. Um, you know, resources in the, in the professional development area have been cut back so many times that and there's not a pot of federal money out there that says okay you know you, we're going to pay for, you know the IB program doesn't come in and pay for NYP professional development so I could see where this you know and I've and I've heard the, the staff feel like that you know we're just we're being that they have double right, right right exactly but they but they've they put up I mean they they've done an excellent job and doing what they knew they had to do but it's what they wanted to do in most cases um, bittersweet, you know, in, in what I see in this because, um, you know, could we have increased the number of students that go on to be in our IB program? Maybe. Maybe not. I don't, you know, we have no idea if it would increase that number. Um, I think that we have a strong program in our middle schools, no matter which one you're at. So I think if there's any, and that would be my question to you out of all this talking I just did, and that is, based on our program of studies for our middle schools and all of our offerings if this, if this goes away and york middle school resets itself back to the regular program of studies for middle school um do our students have the same basis that they need in the in the structure that they can take and go right into the ib program um, without any hiccup along the way. Absolutely, and remember that the MYP program is not designed as a feeder into the IB diploma program. So it's not a requirement. The, other than the, the global mindedness, that context, 
It is not a um, feeder program into the IB diploma program. MYP is a program that's designed for all students, um, whereas the diploma program is identified for specific students in, in terms of your um, typically gifted students. And so that's not a requirement. The other p big piece I want to keep going back to is we were not where we are now with respect to transformative learning when we brought the MYP program. And even when the IB site team came in and said, you need to move to a whole school model, and we initiated the whole school model, we weren't where we are now with transformative learning and the transformative project-based learning. We're moving forward with that. And really what it allows people to do at Yorktown Middle School is to really focus on the school division initiatives um, and not feel like they're being burdened with the school division initiatives and the MYP training that they're required to do. And that was the sidebar because while you all were talking, my question to Dr. Williams was, when do we start? When do we truly start transformative? Uh, so this is probably as one ventured up, the other one ventured mm -hmm. down. Uh, and, and for me, I have sit here trying to regroup that meeting when you all first presented this program to us and the possibilities that it held for the division mm -hmm. and where we are now and that it just didn't follow through the way we thought. Mm -hmm. um, this is we get a little dig in. We've been doing transformative learning and career in tech for many years. <laughs> yeah, it goes way back. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Now, I personally, I admire the staff and the administrators for recognizing the duplicated mm -hmm. effort here and bringing us back together more unity across our schools and it shows that our people are on their toes and alert and I'm, I'm really thankful that they have taken the time to speak up and discuss that with y'all so my hat's off to everybody Absolutely. involved and hats off to you guys for listening yeah. to them I know I've yeah. talked to teachers at York and parents and they've had um, many concerns with the NYP program um, I think it's time to pull the plug well, let me go and share, um, wait a minute, I can do my mouse, can I? Um, next steps, um, we will follow up with Yorktown Middle School staff regarding the conversations that we had this evening. In fact, um, Ms. Hutton shared with her leadership team today that we would be discussing this. They weren't surprised because in the um, professional development that they did in December, in the conversations and the data analysis protocol, um, one of the things that the principal shared with the staff is that she would be sharing this information with school board staff and that ultimately we would be sharing this information with you. So it should not come as a surprise. We will also follow up with a parent letter and we'd like to do a parent forum um, prior to our regularly scheduled school board meeting this month. Ms. Hutton's going to get back with me reg regarding the date. And primarily what they would talk about with respect to the forum is what, again, much like the survey, what are the pieces of the program that they value the most that they would like to see continued at um, Yorktown Middle School as they could be continued. And then as Dr. Williams mentioned, um, we would make changes to the program of studies and bring that back to the board. Any so, questions? So I am, I am sensing some, some general support. We're not asking for a final commitment. We will plan on bringing this back as an action item on the consent agenda in terms of changes to the program of studies. But if you all, in, in the um, next couple of weeks, if you've got additional questions, um, just give me a call or, or shoot me an email and, and we'll want to get you all the information so you have whatever you need to, to make a decision in a couple of weeks. Yeah.